Hello dear friends, welcome to another video of the Never Do Through the GUI What You Can Do Through the Klee channel. I am Vangelis Prokopiou and you are watching Advanced Regular Expressions Usage with Real World Example. Uh, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Farid who asked for such a video about Advanced Regular Expressions Usage. So I created this video and I hope that uh, he really likes it, Farid likes the video and all of you that we will see will like the video because in my opinion I have quite um, good information in it within uh, the real world example that we will see together. So before continuing we can start by saying some general things about uh, regular expressions and grep for starters. Uh, we all know the grep uh, command line utility. If we run help on grep we will see some information. So I will uh, go over some stuff re really quickly because there is enough information on the internet regarding grep. Uh, and then we will uh, continue to the real world example. So what I wanted to say about grep is that we have uh, three um, regular expression engines that we can use. The first one is the basic regular expressions engine. Let me zoom in. Uh, which is denoted with the G flag and it is the default regular expression used by grep. So if you don't provide any other flag, it, the G flag is used, which is the basic regular expression engine. There is also the extended regular expressions, which is denoted with the E flag, this one. Uh, so when you provide the E flag to grab, you can use some features of the extended regular expression engine. And at the end there is the Perl uh, regular expression engine which provides even more stuff and can be used when we provide the P uh, command line argument to grab. Another thing that it is important of course is the invert match command which uh, inverts the match and it matches things that are not equal to the regular expression that we provided. And the last thing that I want to discuss about uh, is the context control, as it is said here. We have three options, as you can see here. It's the B flag, which shows before context, so if we provide grep B plus a number, we will get the matching line plus n, uh, n lines before the match. An example would be grep dot b for example 2 and what we want to match, match and the file. So if we run this command on such a file it will search for the match uh, for the match string or regular expression. It will print the line that contains this match. Plus, it will print two lines before it. So we will have in total three lines. The the other one is the a flag, which is the after uh, context, and it does the same thing, but with lines that are after the matching line. So this command would uh, provide us the matching line plus two more lines after the matching line for a total of three lines. And there is this, uh, this switch which uh, stands for both before and after. So this one would provide us the matching line plus two lines before plus two lines after for a total of five lines. Let's check again the help page. This is the context control. The B is the before as we said, A is after and C 
is the general context which uh, controls both before and after. This is, these were some general stuff about uh, the grep command line utility. Uh, as I said, there are uh, enough resources on the internet, so if you want uh, more information about grep, you can check out other resources. Uh, I don't want to repeat things that are out there. The only thing additional that we want to say is that uh, it's a very good practice to always uh, single quote your regular expression because that prevents uh, the bus expansion because uh, bus also uses meta characters and uh, it, uh, if it expands your uh, regular expression meta characters that that will create a problem so we should always for example single quote our regular expression to say for example this uh, and run it on our file instead of having it without quotes for example or using the end line character uh, meta character the good practice is to always single quote in order to properly evaluate uh, the regular expression. This is the first thing. And the other extra thing that uh, I want to say is that uh, when you have to build complex regular expressions, you have to build them gradually. There is no way that you can achieve uh, a regular expression <coughs> uh <coughs> when it is big and complicated. There's no way you can achieve it if you try to do it all uh, in one fell swoop once. You have to build it gradually. And this will become uh, quite obvious in the example that we will uh, see together. And you will see how gradually we can build up our uh, regular expression and do the stuff that we want to do. So I think now it's time to begin our uh, example. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, let's begin our example. First of all, we will cut the file that we will use. Let me uh, zoom out and explain you what's going on in here. As you can see, we have some lines here. Uh, these are uh, real uh, world, the real world um, uh, data from uh, Catalon uh, testing solution. Uh, these are Catalon tests, and I have taken these lines here and put them in this TXT to show you what we want to do. So. Imagine that we have these uh, <coughs> these files that are Catalan tests and we have scattered in our project which consists of uh, many files of course, not just one file. We have, uh, let's say, this line. This line. This is an instruc instruction for Catalan. And uh, here we are saying that uh, blah 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 here and this one, this thing in these uh, brackets, is an argument to this instruction. We provide uh, an argument, let's say, here. And our, um, our goal is to remove this argument for this specific activity, for the 1.11.1 activity only, and not other activities. And we want to delete the argument that is passed within these brackets. So the final result that we want is this. We want empty brackets. This is a groovy syntax, so we are denoting an empty uh, empty array here. Empty hash map, I think. I don't remember anyway. But we want to delete this argument and have it to be empty. No arguments. Of course, as we said now, we have only one uh, file for testing purposes. This is the file. But imagine that, uh, as we said, this was scattered uh, in many files uh, 
uh, in your project, which could be multiple of files, uh, a lot more than, let's say, some uh, a dozen or, m or more, of course, yeah, more. Or uh, imagine another, uh, let's say, situation where you have uh, even hundreds of files, something that we want, uh, that you want to change in hundreds of files. For example, uh, of course, there are some programs, some IDEs when you're working with code that provide uh, find and replace functionality for all the project, across the project, for multiple files. But in this specific use case, uh, Catalan does not provide such functionality. So it should be done either by hand or through automation. So I had to impl implement it through automation and we will recreate what I did there. But before continuing, I would like, this is a good time to stress uh, for another, another uh, time the power that uh, the command line uh, can provide you instead of using the, the GUI, the uh, user interface for performing various operations like this one. Imagine going through your files one by one and searching for this instance in order to replace the string by hand. Okay, I think this was quite an informative prologue to the situation. So we will start trying to implement this change, removing this argument for this specific activity. So the first thing do identify the files that contain <coughs> that contain this um, the lines that we want to change. In this specific uh, case, we want this activity. <coughs> so we will start by grabbing grab, and we want to grab for this, and our file is this one. As you can see, we're starting getting results. Uh, a small parenthesis is that, uh <coughs> <coughs> sorry, this advanced example uh, will um, will be built with seed instead of grep because as we said this is a real world example and in this case we have to, to use seed but uh, the point is uh, the focal point is the regular expressions and the regular expressions work either with grep or with seed so the concepts are equal equally valid for grep and seed and any other program that uses regular expressions Okay, so we continue. We got uh, the um, we got the lines that uh, contain this activity, and then we want to pipe this to grab permit. No, that that's wrong. That's wrong. <coughs> so we are continuing that was wrong the what I tried was wrong what we have to do is of course this we will start by saying that we want to search for this activity and then we want to find this specific argument the yes permit so we will say that we want any character any number of times and then we want to match this one the permit so we have all the lines but we don't want the lines we want the files but we start from the lines and if we apply if we provide the dash l argument to grab then this will return the files that contain the lines that we are interested in so we start by filtering the files that we are interested in in this case we are only we only have one file the tests txt file. So when we find this file we will provide a loop, we will pass it to a loop and we will say while read file do echo found done. Let's see if this works okay. 
of course in uh, the real world project we would uh, run this with the uh, with the R uh, command to search recursively for the current directory and on not only for a file but since we know the file in this case this is how we would run it but of course now we have only this file so we are using this file and we are not providing the recurse uh, flag and everything that we will do is within here as we said with said so we'll start uh, <coughs> the set command and we will execute it on the specific file the command will be a substitute command which will run on the file uh, uh, I used as you can see this uh, character instead of the default one we can use any character we want I will use this because it is simpler and we will start building our regular expression in here we want to find uh, find and in here we want to replace so <coughs> let's start building, building our regular expression what do we want to achieve uh, I shouldn't have deleted this do okay run this we will have the lines that we are interested in okay we have the lines that we are interested in so we can work our goal as we said was to delete this argument for the 1.11.1 .1 activity so we will have to start and match this argument only for this activity. How would we achieve this? Since SID is not very flexible, what we will have to, to do is match this whole line and then replace it appropriately, thus removing the part that we want to remove. So we will start uh, um, building our regular expression and the first thing we want to match is of course this activity so we will put it here and here we will say uh, that it is working we will use this uh, string just to see that it is working while we are working ok we matched the string this one so the, the next part that we have to match is this single uh, quote and the bracket. Let's try matching the single quote. Of course it will not work because we have single quotes. Neither escaping this will work. So what we have to do here is change these external single quotes to double quotes. and let's run it now as you can see the single quote was also matched and it is replaced the next thing we have to match is the closing parenthesis it matched ok let me remove no let's not remove the spaces the next thing we have to match is the comma so we will come here we will uh, add the comma the comma was, was matched <coughs> but as you can see here now I will remove the extra spaces as you can see so, uh, sometimes we have a space and some st sometimes we don't so we have to account for that so we will uh, add the space here and then an asterisk and indeed this one uh, accounts for the space 
as you as you can see it was matched and it was replaced and the next thing we have to match is uh, the opening bracket let's run this no it did not work it needs to be escaped we got the bracket that is very nice and now the rest the rest uh, that we have to match is this string this string so what we have to do is we are not interested in this part we are interested in this part because this part always uh, goes along with this part so we will focus on this and we will say that after the bracket what we want is any character any a number of any number of times ending with permit and single quote let's try to run this indeed it worked as you can see everything is matched and replaced so we have made some progress but as we said uh, we want in the end to have this result but the way we structured our uh, regular expression we cannot achieve that we cannot uh, have a way to restore the activity or maybe we can restore it we can restore it here for example we can say mm, indeed we can say we can take this one put it in here and say that we want this one and we want and this one and if we run it you can see that we indeed did what we wanted we replaced the argument within the hash map and now the hash map is empty so a way to achieve it is to hard code the replacement pattern pattern in here this is the replacement pattern in these characters that I am providing right now this is the hard coded replacement pattern which does the job that we want to do so this is one uh, way that I just th th uh, thought about right now another way is to let's restore it here the working thing another way is to create a group and reuse the group uh, from the first part of the regular expression so in order to create a group we have to provide a parenthesis in the part that we are interested in and the part that we are interested in is the activity as you can see the comma the space and the beginning bracket so since this is a group we can come here in the replacement pattern and we can say that we want to use this group one and then add the semicolon let's run this as you can see the result was the same we have the activity restored and we also have an empty hash map so we have the same result but since I like to be consistent as you can see here we don't have a space but in the other instances we have a space and I think that in this case the best solution was to use the first uh, replacement pattern this replacement pattern which is the hard coded one and provide indeed the activity the comma the space and the bracket and the semicolon so if we run this you will see that we get the job done plus we have consistency here in the formatting of the of our lines so in this 
In this uh, specific uh, instance, I will use this solution, the hard-coded solution. And of course, now we have to edit our file. So since we are now just printing this result, what we have to do is now provide the I flag to seed, uh, which uh, performs uh, an in uh, file operation. And if we run this one, this command, uh, the result in the file should be this, if we check the file. Before we run it though, I will comment this out. We will check the file, cut, test.txt. As you can see, this is currently our file. It has the arguments. So we will run our command here with the, the i flag to seed and let's see the result. The command run, we have no output, which means that we have uh, no errors. And if we cut our test uh, file, you can see that the result is the expected. Everything was replaced. And if we open it with Vim, you will see that we achieved what we want. So, uh, I don't know how much time this video has been running uh, until now. I think it's some minutes, let's say five minutes, ten minutes, whatever. But what I want to say is that we just spent five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes and we created this solution. We created this solution which uh, can save us a lot, a lot of time if we have to substitute uh, this thing that we substituted here to substitute it in multiple files. And as I said, in the real world uh, uh, scenario that I implemented and executed this, uh, the files were multiple files. So there's there was no way of going in there manually and searching the files and replacing the values that we wanted to replace. So as you can see, to come again to the power that the command line provides us, as you can see, we spent some a little time on the command line, a few minutes building up a solution. And this solution can, uh, can save us a lot of time, a lot of time, and a lot of errors that we may do if we do it manually, if we typing if we typed each time that we wanted to to change this value whereas in this uh, solution we type once and then the machine executes what we typed if we have typed it correctly this one time the substitution will be correct if we messed it up the substitution would be wrong but of course, since we use other tools like version control, we can revert the change and fix our uh, problem here in the command. For example, if we, instead of uh, writing one here, we wrote four because we are, we are stupid for another way, for one uh, reason or another. We revert, we fix uh, the bug, we rerun the command and boom, uh, problem solved. Uh, this is the info that I wanted to share w with you in this video. Uh, maybe some of you think that I'm rambling, uh, but in my opinion these are very useful information because as I said it is uh, based on real world examples and uh, the usage of the regular expressions and the command line and the Unix Linux utilities. So forgive me if you think if you think that uh, I ramble a little bit it's your opinion and it is uh, respected so to recap this is what I wanted to share you with you in this video if you enjoyed this video you can hit the like button and you can share your thought your thoughts on it in the comments 
Moreover, if you like the content of this channel, you can subscribe by clicking the penguin that you see on your screen. Thank you for watching and have a great day.